Do you ever feel trapped by your QWERTY keyboard? Do you ever miss sending text messages between the years of 1998 and 2008? Well, I've got something for you. I made a standalone T9 predictive text keyboard that will work with any computer or smartphone, no special software required. I actually made a bunch of them. Let's back up a bit. What is T9? T9 is a method of providing predictive text to someone trying to type something. You're probably already familiar with the idea of predictive text. On a smartphone, it's the thing that provides those three or so words at the top of your keyboard based on what you've entered so far. T9 was one of the first implementations of predictive text to be widely adopted. And while it is not nearly as advanced as what we have today, it made a huge difference. It allowed folks to type full words, sentences, paragraphs, at least with the Latin alphabet, with only 12-ish buttons. And before you bring up an example like Morse code, which you can use to say anything with a single button, know that T9 lets you keep your ratio of buttons physically pressed to valid characters entered reasonably close to one. Let me show you what I mean. So obviously not as fast as your average relatively online millennial might bang out on their laptop, but I think I could get pretty close with more practice. And I might actually practice. I honestly did not expect this to be so usable. Fun, even. So I dug a little deeper into the history of T9 and predictive text more generally, and I realized that there are still a ton of contexts in which fast, tactile, one-handed typing might still be useful. If you think a device like this might help you or someone you know is typing in a meaningful way, please let me know. Leave a comment or hit me on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Supply permitting, I would love to send a few of these out to people. For reasons that I'll get to in a minute, I'm only gonna talk about the hardware quickly in this video. And first, I have to thank the lovely people over at JLC PCB for helping me bring my first PCB ever to life. I'm realizing this is probably mirrored, so let's give it one second. Even for a complete noob like myself, it only took a few minutes to get my Gerber files uploaded and ordered, and the delivery was quick too. So check out their link down in the description for a deal. If you had told this software developer even a year ago that he'd be getting his own PCBs made, he would not have believed you. So I am very, very proud of this. For the microcontroller, I chose to use the new Raspberry Pi chip. 
the RP2040. And I'm really excited that worked out because I feel like I was finally able to create a project that is simple enough and cheap enough that anyone can give it a try, even if you have no electronics experience at all. You can build a version of this project with a Raspberry Pi Pico and a generic phone keypad for like $15, and you would not have to solder a thing. And since I wrote the firmware in CircuitPython, you don't have to install any software or fancy tool chains. You can just drag and drop my code files and you're off to the races. I've also been working on a tool to let you customize the dictionary of words that lives on the keyboard itself. So you just feed my tool a list of words and it will spit out a single special file that you also just drag and drop next to the code files. The keyboard will automatically reboot and load in the new list of words. You can swap out the entire dictionary in seconds. The size of the dictionary is going to be limited by the amount of flash space you have on your board, but the version I have has like 15,000 words and I have plenty of room to spare. If you've watched my videos before, you know that this is usually the point where I get way into the weeds and hit you with the gratuitous soldering montage. I'm trying something new here. I'm gonna split this project video into two pieces. The first, which you are currently watching, will serve to demo my idea and the final build in a way that is hopefully accessible to anyone who is interested. The second video will be a long technical deep dive complete with footage of me putting everything together. So I figured this is a way to fully indulge my inner nerd and simultaneously spare my non-technical friends and family who want to support me and watch the channel but don't care about Python libraries. You guys can skip part two, it's fine. Plus this will allow me to collect feedback on this project before I get so sick of it that I never wanna talk about it again. So if there's anything you wanna know about this build, leave a comment and I will do my best to address it in the next video, which will ideally come out within the next few weeks, possibly next month. I'm about to go on vacation, so I'll do my best, but whenever it's done, I will make sure there's a link to it in the description and somewhere here. And this will be awkward until that time has come. If you would like to be notified when that video comes out, turns out YouTube has a nifty subscription feature. There's a button down there that you can and should click. And if you wanna get a preview of those nitty gritty details or you wanna start building this yourself, I will also include links to both the GitHub and Hackaday IO project pages down below. Um, they're ready to go. They should have everything you need to get started. Finally, I'd like to give some shout outs. First, thank you to Danielle Teague for designing these killer keycaps. I cannot wait to get more of these made. Thank you to my cousin, Annie, who gave my PCB design a once over before I sent it out. And finally, shout out to my buddy, Chad, who very kindly sent me this entire box of his family's old cell phones. So I think my next project is going to have to be trying to reconstruct his family tree using only undeleted contacts and text messages. Wish me luck. That's all I got for now. Thank you again for watching, sharing, subscribing. I'll see you for part two.